our board meeting of the Coleman School District and we'll begin with a flag salute led by Sue Ellen Rex. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Superintendent Maxwell, are there any changes to tonight's agenda? Uh, there are um, necessarily no changes, but there are some last minute updates, so I'll go over those to make sure you're aware. Um, we updated the LMS Ed Specs Executive Summary. We've updated uh, the board meeting minutes. Um, we added an additional ASB fundraiser for LMS Orchestra t-shirts, an additional check summaries, and moved the uncollected non-tax revenue report from program report to discussion item with an added executive summary. Okay. So those are all reflected, but they were last minute uh, changes uh, probably over the weekend and into Monday. So I just want to call that to your attention. Well, I will move that we approve the agenda as updated. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, agenda is approved. Next, we'll move on to reports, correspondence, and programming, beginning with our Pullman High School ASB report presented by Sue Ellen Rice. Oh, she's got papers this time. Must be serious stuff. So we've had some fun things going on since the last meeting. Obviously, this last week was homecoming, so we've been having class officers just help out Spirit Club by leading their grades in lip sync and hall decorating and just helping to get the word out about different homecoming activities. And as well as that, we had a one-day leadership camp last Monday that some of the underclassmen got to go to to learn more about um, kind of school safety was one thing they were focusing on and then how to be leaders just improving with that so as they move up in grades they can we can become better ASB and just keep working on that. Um, we're working more on class meetings. We have a half day next week obviously so just making things go as smoothly as possible and working on the presentation. Uh, we've had some cool things with students reaching out to us. Uh, the first one is that there's going to be a new club that they figured out how to do it, um, the environmental club. And there's actually a student who was interested in being the environmental representative that you asked about. Oh, so I think Mrs. Willie's going to talk to you about that. Um, so that was really cool. They knew how to do that because they knew people in ASB. So they talked to them and they're going to start up a new club. We also had a really great letter this morning um, from a student where she'd like to have a yellow out at the last home football game on October 18th for a student that should be here right now but is in Texas getting treatment for bone cancer. So she's like, they're still, they should still be a student at this high school and we really want to show our support. So it's really great. We're going to try and do that for her, but just seeing that the students are reaching out more to ASB and asking us to help is really great. Um, a new fun idea we came up with is that on Halloween, we thought it would be fun if we had like three little tables and then if you dress up, you could come trick or treat at our tables just because it's just something fun, you know, since we're in school on that day, it would just be something fun for us to do. Um, we're looking at some new things just for coming up in the months for like food drives or trivia nights, uh, the Polar Express PJ party with the elementary school children in December. Um, and yeah, so those are just some of the fun things that we're trying to do and accomplish in the upcoming months. So yeah, that's basically it. Wow, thank, thank you, you very much. You're busy, busy. Thanks. All right, next we'll move on to board reports, beginning with Director Reed. Oh, it okay. Lots today too. Um, first of all, I'll say that uh, Nathan Roberts, who is on the uh, Washington State School Board Directors uh, Legislative uh, Committee, and uh, I'm on the Resolutions Committee for the same organization. We both went to the Legislative S Assembly in Spokane the end of uh, September, and this is where we all vote on the priorities for what we want our 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 organization and the, our uh, lobbyists to uh, really promote within 
the legislative, se legislative session coming up. And so the top 15 were vote that were voted out of 125 that we voted on, it was a long day. Um, there's full funding for school employee benefits and pensions. That was number one. Number two was review revision of prototypical school model funding and formula. Comprehensive school safety was number three. Number four, statewide salary schedule. Number five, special education and special needs students. Number six, equity-based education system. Number seven, fully funded staffing levels. And number eight, attract, recruit, and retain high quality and diverse staff. Number nine, trauma-informed practices and supports for students. Number, oh, that's nine, 10, is funding behavioral support services and social emotional learning for students and staff. Number 11, full funding of basic edu education. That's always there. And number 12 is levy authority and local effort assistance. 13 is academic river and equity in public education. 14 is early childhood education, kindergarten preparedness. And then 15 is paraeducator support. So we will, um, those are the, the things that we will really be emphasizing in our statewide organization. And uh, all I ask is that if you have any examples of how you need help in these areas if you could send it to me our legislators pay much more attention if it's a personal this is what we need this is what your funding has helped us with instead of just saying we need funding for schools our legislators are picky that way and uh, even though i know them all by name and can talk to them and say listen we really need this they really need more than just a threat from me to um, have these things go on and be funded and succeed. Then, of course, I know Bob will probably talk more about the uh, Pullman School District Professional Learning Day, but the piece on, it's just awesome. Is that your wife that did all that? Absolutely. Thank you. It's Grace Grow did this, put it together, and the amount of information mm -hmm. that is being offered is phenomenal. So it should be a good day for all of our staff who attend to that one. Then Pullman High School, I made my reservations today for the Pullman High School booster auction. That is November 9th, 7th, 9th, 7th, 7th, November 7th, something else going on. November 7th, I, I, I know there's my, something on the 9th. I bought my tickets as well. Okay, I got my tickets and it is going to be at the Ensminger Pavilion on the WSU campus, starting at 5.30 with silent auction and social hour and then dinner by fork in the road and live auction. So. Uh, seats are available. It's always a lot of fun and it's a great way to support the boosters. If you make your reservation before October 31st, it's only $40 a ticket. If you make it after, it's $45. So, such a deal. There you go. Something to think about. And then Lincoln Middle School parent conferences are coming up um, October 30th and November 1st. There's 8 million other things going on at Lincoln Middle School. I don't know how you keep track, Cameron, but it's all here and you can go on um, the LMS website to find out everything else that's going on. Book, booster meeting is the 14th at 7 o'clock. So if you're interested in finding out even more about Lincoln Middle School and what's going on, attend the booster meeting and that is it for me. Wow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and I thought I was busy. <laughs> All well, right. I have a more lighthearted report. Okay, thank you, uh, Director I, Everman. I see uh, Chris is here tonight, but I just wanted to uh, I recognize that the Pullman School will be um, moving into the Greater Spokane League next year. So we kind of had a forewarning of that. That's next year, right? So yeah, yeah. So that's great. Uh, give us six, possibly eight teams in that league. Um, and then the other thing is, I attended the Franklin PTA um, this week, and we talked about another urgent uh, topic for my is the spaghetti fee for fifth grade. Oh. So we talked about maybe having a different venue where we could have faster lines and uh, maybe a bigger bigger area. So anyway, they're exploring that. So I think that's a good idea. Is Franklin in the school in charge this year? Uh, they must be, yeah. Yes. Anyway, they're already talking about it, so that's, okay. that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Do no report? No report. Okay. Um, well, I'll just mention uh, Susan and I and Bob attended the WASAF oh, yeah. regional we meeting in too. Rinsville last week. Um, and we participated in one of WASDA's new training modules. They have 
developed this entire scheme for adult education because of course it's so overwhelming when you join a school board and where do you even begin um, and so they I think correctly identified funding as probably the most complex thing that people get overwhelmed by when they join the school board so they took the time to really and Diane does this for us all the time like explain the different funds and um, give you quizzes can you identify w which ex these expenses relate to which fund and what are some rules and you know um, kind of going over the difference for people in business that kind of accounting versus the kind of accounting that's used when you're not trying to make a profit um, and so it was a mini dose of what some kind of larger, longer, like day-long training modules might look like, just a hint of it. Very well done. Um, very friendly, accessible, a lot of turn and talk and, you know, draw pictures and, you know, do things like that, so. Um, so will they be doing that again if there was a Sounded like that's when they're going to begin introducing this. They let us know last spring that they were planning this, and I think what they'll do is they'll roll them out over time so that these are a package that you could then take or run in your local school district or whatever to kind of catch up. So you have that access to the professional development, whatever kind is most helpful for you. So I thought it was really, really good. Oh, I did too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's one other thing I forgot to mention coming up, and I noticed Beth just came in. There's a voters forum and Beale Public Library on the 17th at 7.30, I think, and Beth and I will, my opponent, Beth Ficklin, and I will both be there. So that's something that you might want to. Who is organizing that? Uh, League of Women Voters. Oh, okay. Cool. 6.30 okay. at Beale Public Library. Okay. And then um, I was very honored to attend the uh, Sunnyside fourth graders in Mrs. Clavino's class present their state symbols research. And this is where we have a state insect, a state mammal, a state you know tree, flower, song, you name it. And there we have so many different state symbols that you can watch an entire class present on this topic and they did a wonderful job so um, I appreciated that look forward to more such visits all right I'll turn it over to no did we have we had a wellness meeting yeah should I talk about the wellness okay we also had a wellness committee meeting today um, and we reviewed progress on scratch cooking, which I think the board has been kept relatively up to date about. We also discussed um, the issue of sanitizers being used, like hand sanitizers and sanitizing wipes. Um, the school nurse, Michelle Hyatt, was not there present, but um, they're looking at more and more research that's talking about some of the negative impacts of hand sanitizer and as compared to just washing with soap and water. So um, the wellness committee discussed that and a, a few other topics that generally is attended to. All the three dates for the wellness committee um, are set for the year and those meetings are open to the public and anyone can come and get involved and I think we'll start uh, actually publicizing agenda topics yes. in advance as we become more organized with this. So thank you. Sorry. Okay. So yeah. No. Medium on somebody okay. Um, that, concluded. that concluded my report. Yeah. So uh, it's been very, very busy the last couple of weeks since we last met. So I have uh, several items, and I'll try to be uh, brief and to the point. So uh, Susan mentioned our professional development offerings. So uh, if you'd like a hard copy of that, I'll pass it around. Uh, fantastic offerings covering a wide variety of topics and that's being presented by not only our own staff but some outside experts as well so it's a combination uh, with a quite a variety so really really excited and thankful for our staff that have put that together uh, they've just done an outstanding job um, just to mention uh, there are um, now eight multiple pathways to graduation 
and so uh, that was a result of Senate Bill 5082. And so we'll be doing a, an article on that and getting more information out and working with our high school as well to address those different pathways and how those will work for uh, specific students. So what I mean by multiple pathways is um, right now basically we were limited to pass the state assessment. Uh, there are now other options, other assessments that we can use, ACT, SAT, for example, and some other things. So stay tuned for more information um, as that becomes available. Um, also wanted to mention uh, a couple really nice news articles this week. I'll pass this one around. This was uh, an article about um, Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories that donate um, to our local schools directly. and how in this case it's used to uh, fund STEM programs, so I'll pass that along. That's a really neat program, and it, it is, who they donate to is chosen by those the employees. employees at yep. Schweitzer, so everybody gets a chance to say who they want their funds to go to, it's pretty neat. And it's now not only uh, Pullman schools, it's anywhere, yeah. even across the world. So. Um, second article uh, came out today was Sunnyside, our school peace prize, so Mary Crumple, so I'll pass that along as well. Very nice article. Also, uh, the gifts just keep coming. Uh, we received word this week uh, that Jess Ford will be starting a give back program, and so this is called the Kindness Challenge. Um, each week, each teacher will enter a student whose kind actions stood out to them. At the end of the month, uh, Jess will draw the entries, uh, and the students whose name was pulled will be honored at a school assembly or newsletter, and the student will receive the award of a bike, wow. complimentary of Jess Ford. Wow. That's awesome. Well, the good news doesn't stop there, oh. actually. Uh, <laughs> not realizing that Ashley was going to be here, but um, received a letter uh, letting us know that Ashley Jensen is currently serving on the technology coordinator on the board of directors for our statewide organization. So that's the Washington Activity Coordinators Association. And so Ashley is new to the board, but brings a wealth of practical experience to us. Her knowledge of technology and social media is outstanding. She is energetic, insightful, and keenly aware of the needs of students. Congratulations. So I'll oh, pass that on. Yay. That's awesome. Uh, following up, I'm almost done with my list. Uh, so job shadowing this week has been very busy. I spent uh, two half days at Lincoln Middle School uh, working with Savannah Hevely, uh, Kelly Schulteis, Jerome Jones, and Becky Addison. And so, uh, as one of the students said, what are my qualifications to teach? And I reminded them that I do have a teaching credential and have taught middle school for many years in the past. So uh, they took that as a ringing endorsement and said, okay. So uh, I got to do some teaching, it was great, really enjoyed it, and they are just doing an outstanding job uh, at Lincoln Middle School. Last but not least, uh, just an update, I've been doing uh, numerous bond and levy information presentations with Diane, and uh, we have many, many more to go. <laughs> and that concludes my report. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next on the agenda are program reports, and the first program report is a Lincoln Middle School Student Showcase presented by Principal Cameron Grove. Well, I thought you were just here to enjoy our stimulating meeting. You, 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 it's fabulous, yeah, by yeah, the way. It's amazing. Okay. Uh, as always, thanks for inviting us. I, I wanted to introduce you to, but Bob already brought her up, uh, Ashley Jensen, who teaches leadership for us and also eighth grade social, social studies, and she'll be uh, introducing our two students. Hello, everyone. Um, so this is my third year teaching leadership at Lincoln Middle School, um, and our class really focuses on, in order to make our school better, we have to focus on ourselves first and making us better people. And so Logan and Anina wanted to share kind of what we're working on in class, and um, Logan has also been in leadership last year and signed up again. Um, so they're just going to talk about what work that we're doing in leadership this year.
Part of being a leader is doing things that make you uncomfortable. That being said, my name is Logan Thompson, and I'm here to talk to you about assemblies my leadership class put together. There are many parts that go into creating an assembly. There are people who find information, and sometimes poems about the topic of the assembly. There are people who, that, who, who then take that information and make a script for people to speak about that in front of, about in front, about it in front of the attendants. And there are people who work behind the scenes, whether it is decorations for the assembly or it's people who tell the speakers when to go up and talk. Finally, uh, Channel 3 creates a video for the assembly. One of my favorite parts about our assemblies is uh, that not just the student body attends the assemblies, it's also parents and people of the committee who get to watch with us. Um, so today I'm going to be speaking about how we are building our character. We're doing character dares and leadership right now. And character dares are basically where we have a packet of 40 days to get a new dare about how to build your character. And today our dare was kindness. And what we had to do is give five genuine compliments to people. Um, and it's, it's kind of what it's basically trying to develop our character so that we can become better people so we can help our school become a better place for other people to visit. So, yeah, uh, so kind of, we went on a field trip last, I can't remember what Monday, what? That was right. Uh, last Monday in Hemeroy and it was, um, what we did was we were, uh, we went and we met a lot of new people and we were learning about how we can we went through and learned how we can make our school a better place, and it kind of helped us realize how we can make road to uh, successful ways to, to be kind to other people. And, yeah. Anyone on that level? <laughs> well done. There, there you go. Hey, and, and even before we end real quick, uh, these two just offered to come in and, and speak about what they're doing. Uh, we did have one more who wanted to come in, and you talked about how busy things are. She's at a varsity volleyball game in Clarkson. She goes, oh, I'll make it back in time. Yeah. We didn't think she would, but that, that's okay. Uh, a lot of great kids doing amazing things, and so we wanted to thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, let us come in and, and explain some of those. Do you have any questions for anybody here? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So the character dares that you were talking about, yeah. is that, do you do you have all the students in the school do those, or is it just the students that are in the leadership class? It's just our students in our leadership okay. class. Cool. Sounds really neat. It would be nice for those to do that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's an idea. Yeah. Can you evolve that that direction? You might help a guy. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. The next program report is uh, pertaining to the district's CTE program, and this is presented by our assistant principal of athletics and activities and also CTE director, Chris Franklin. All right, so I put on your guys' um, area kind of the, a booklet of things, and I'll kind of go over those. The first one is the CTE district-wide plan uh, for this year. <clears throat> the second part is the athletics, which is you'll see them divided there. Um, so on the uh, CTE side, it, it just kind of give you an update of where we're going and, and what we're doing. So uh, All right. So um, so as you see, there, the, the, the stuff in the colored pages, I'll explain what that is, so you don't, th we're not gonna go over those tonight. So, just kind of be aware of that. And so, um, all right, well, we have yeah, that's good. All right, so, um, so for the CTE stuff, so all programs are aligned with rigorous academic and industry standards. And that's the purpose of advisory committees, is to make sure curriculum is being done by industry standards. 
So in May 2019, all CTE instructors and advisory committees, they're required to do a program evaluation. Um, this identifies the instructional needs for the program, uh, for curriculum basis, supplies basis, uh, changes that need to be made to curriculum supplies training to keep the program up to industry standards. It verifies that the instructors that are teaching the class are there. Um, and this is what we upload at the end of the year, because every year by the end of, by September 30th, we have to do a P210 vote form to OSBI, and these are what we're required to, to upload. So you'll notice in the colored packet, and you, I'm going to go over, but all of these evaluations are there. So you guys can look through them. This is where advisory committees have identified what areas of the program need to be improved upon, uh, different things like that. The other thing, which is a little bit different than general education, is that all CT programs must integrate 21st century leadership skills into the class. And that's where you will get the CTSOs, uh, like Skills USA. Skills, skills is the VICA. VICA kind of changed to Skills USA. Um, that's where you're going to get. So Skills kind of falls into metals and, metals and wood, but it also goes into photo, photography and multimedia, DECA, and all those. And so all of our programs have been certified through those, those leadership skills that they're teaching. Um, the other thing is every five years, we have to, every CTE class has to redo their curriculum. And why that is important, why is that important? Is because CTE classes have standards, but they're also expected to meet all the other, the academic standards, the ELA standards, the math standards. They're supposed to integrate those into their courses. And so we have to go through OSBI to get those reapproved. This last year we did 13 business ed uh, classes from LMS and PHS. We're still waiting on one uh, just because OSBI was a little mixed up this summer. And so we're still waiting on the accounting one to return, uh, but it's all been submitted. In 2019 and 20, so starting in January, we're going to have to upload all of our ag classes to be upload to be reapproved. What that means is for their curriculum frameworks, any new classes that they're doing have to be updated in OSBI's uh, standards there. Uh, the other question a lot of people ask is, so we have CT classes, do fulfill some graduation requirements, do have some cross crediting. On this, this page over here, you'll see that these are all the classes we have that are what they need. Uh, so if you look at career choices, it, it's its own requirement, but it doesn't meet a CT standard. Uh, then we also have uh, CAD 3 and 4 is a, is a math a graduation requirement. Uh, unfortunately, we, unfortunately, we don't have CAD 3 and 4, but we do have the group. Um, the articulation piece is what we articulate with the, the community colleges. And so as you're looking through that, those are the courses we have articulated right now. Um, we're working with Walla Walla to add more. Um, we're also working with Spokane Falls and Spokane Community College to get some more articulations. Uh, articulations are typically done uh, through community colleges. Okay, We live in Pullman, Washington State's right here. Why don't we do that? Because a lot of times Washington State won't articulate with CTE program, which doesn't make sense. Uh, and that's why kind of why we'll talk about computer science here in a second. So uh, but our instructors are currently working uh, to get more articulations for our kids. So basically what that is, they take the class. You know, let's take a, a kid who, who does metals three and four. They can get metals, metals intro to metals uh, class down at Walla Walla Community College as a credit. It's a free credit to them. It's, it's done through the state of Washington. So that's kind of an awesome little thing that they're, so we're working on that to kind of give more opportunities to our kids. Um, so some course offerings that we have at Lincoln Middle School. Uh, CT is a broad range of things. Um, industrial technology, there's three sections. Uh, and those are the, the second semester, so I didn't give you the student numbers. Uh, electronics, two sections right now. We have 63 students currently enrolled in there. Gateway to Technology A, we have four sections. Uh, there's 45 students. We have Gateway to Technology B, which is a uh, biomedical key component of Gateway to Technology. So that's kind of what Gateway to Technology B is, bi biomedical. Uh, there's 21 students in there. Uh, computer apps, we have 94 students, but all eighth graders are required to take that class, so that's a great thing. Uh, 
communication media channel three uh, those type of classes we have 29 students uh, in the fall semesters there's only two classes and in the spring semester there's one more class so uh, middle school cte program is, is looking good we also have some stem which it's kind of confusing because it's a unit or two in a science class so uh, it's kind of a, a weird kind of dynamic with that so uh, Pullman High School and you'll see we have tons of, of CT classes and offerings uh, we have leadership we have two classes of that 39 kids economics uh, 55 students for two classes marketing has 27 students for choices is 94 um, students there uh, yearbook now remember and the reason I have career choices here because it's a semester class and in the spring the rest of the senior class will take it okay so that's why 94 doesn't seem like a lot but it actually is um, yearbook 13 students uh, those are the students that that create the the, the yearbook in, at the end of the year worksite learning so we do have worksite learning where kids can go out and right now it's only the business ed marketing piece where we're working on uh, some of the instructors have wanted in agriculture they want to get the uh, worksite learning so they can get credit for working and, and so we're working on that uh, right now we have six students enrolled in there but we're hoping to grow that a little bit uh, there agriculture and natural science education so at communications we have two classes and I'm, I'm going to kind of skip over this but the reason these three these three classes are highlighted here they're they're run simultaneously so you have at communication with four students, you have plant sciences with 32, plant science two with one. So they're kind of embedded in there. And so they're not at their own standalone class. And so uh, animal science, we have two classes. Ag bio, uh, I think ag bio, we have two classes. I, that was a typo on my part. Uh, so 56 students with that one. Um, we are looking, I know our instructor wants to add uh, vet science as a class which uh, with having WSU right here I think is a great opportunity uh, he's, he's doing all the legwork on and getting that approved through his advisory committee and whatnot health education health science education we have sports medicine we have one class of 24 students uh, skill technical science the video video photo that's the multimedia stuff digital photography we have one class 19 students advanced video production one class of 15 Multimedia, we have three classes of 86. New Media 30, uh, AP Photo, Art. So some of our kids that are in the photography class, the advanced photography, can get AP Photo. That means they submit their, their portfolio to the AP and they can get credit for that. Uh, skill Technical Sciences, Metals and Wood. Uh, metals, we have uh, three classes of it. Metals 1, 2, and 3. Um, 38 students in Metals 1. 20 and 2, 11 and 3, uh, Woods, um, Woods 1, we have 32 students, and Woods 2, we have 2 students. Um, the nice thing is, is in our medals class, they're built, they're doing things for the city. Uh, and so the, they they reach out to, to Mr. Schatzko, and they're building a, a senior project that's going to be a P along Greyhound, or at, at Long Davis Way coming in. Uh, they're also working on some storm storm drainage protection so they're doing a lot of integrating with that uh, woods is and you'll you'll probably see this later is uh, woods are actually building sheds and they're they're doing still like learning how to do that but they're in the process of building sheds uh, for people that need it whether it's other ASB clubs or different things like that so that's kind of that's kind of fun AP computer science is a new class uh, this year if you look at the industry standards or industry that is growing in the state of Washington, computer science is your number one. And so we decided to, to get AP Computer Science A. Uh, now not all those kids will take the AP Computer test, computer science test, but it's a great opportunity there for them. And then family consumer science, uh, foods and nutrition, we have three classes of 74, culinary arts, one class of 18, and independent living, uh, or I live, is one class of 23. So those are kind of the, the course offerings we have for CTE. So we have some great accomplishments last year. Uh, in the uh, Skills USA welding, we had one student compete at, um, at Nationals. We had another student that went, and I think we'll probably be going this year. Uh, but Noel had not finished first in place in state, 19th place in Nationals. Uh, a former student of ours, and 
I know it's not a current student, but it's nice to recognize these. John Cooper finished 19th place uh, in the CNC Lane Turning Specialist part, and that's awesome. Uh, Skills USA, Scott uh, Josh Dorman finished second. FCCLA, one student competed at nationals and earned a silver medal for fashion construction competition. Um, DECA had five students go to nationals. I didn't find a placing for them, so that, that was kind of hard there. Uh, FFA had four students that will be competing in nationals in October. Now, all these other nationals are in the summer, and so people might wonder, why is FFA nationals in October? What is happening during summer? is harvest yeah. throughout the whole nation, not only in this area. So these guys are going to be going uh, in October. So vet science, you've got Haley Penman, Isabel Ridge, uh, Sarah Uliberry, Uliberry uh, Selma R Raggle. Uh, Selma's the only one that's currently here. The other three uh, will be representing Pullman High School. They've already graduated. Uh, and then we have some delegates who were voted in at the state FFA convention. Uh, Maddie, Madison Wolf and Kara Christensen will be going. Uh, so some other accomplishments besides the CPSO stuff. Last year we received the Perkins Grant uh, for $17,120 that helped us purchase a brand new CNC uh, router for the wood shop. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more expensive than a than the Perkins Grant allowed, but <laughs> we, we found ways to do it. Uh, last last summer we installed the sound system in the metals and wood shop, uh, replaced the CAD lab computers, and added more metal and wood shop computers because a lot of their stuff is going technological, and so we, we're updating those things. Updated multimedia cameras and video broadcasting equipment. Uh, it's technology. It changes the moment you buy it. Yep. So, um, updated houndcentral.org website. So you notice over the last year is they've been the classes have been updating the website. LMS video editing equipment and supplies for Channel Three. Uh, Channel Three is doing a really nice job, and so they just needed some upgraded equipment. And then uh, added more. This was kind of funny reading this, but added more Pi equipment uh, because in electronics they do build robots and, and that's where they're getting that first taste of robotics and, and so uh, Mr. Davis uh, got some, some, some things with that. So some challenges, um, I always hear about, oh well we need to add this class, we need to add this class. And as I, I tell our CTE teachers, this is our pot of students here at Pullman High School or at Lincoln Middle School. We're not having more kids come into this pot. So CTE's over here in this pot. So if we're gonna add classes, where are we gonna take it from? And so, it's, so if we start adding CTE classes into here, what are we taking away from? So uh, that's kind of a thing. I know every, I mean, there's a lot of different, there's aeronautics out there. There's a lot of different things that we could look at adding, but what are we gonna be taking away from? And that's, that's one thing that, you know, it's a challenge. Because uh, our, our, as Diane has mentioned before in board meetings, is our enrollment's kind of stabilizing a little bit. Uh, so the other thing is meeting the challenge of compliance for CTE, um, program and reapprovals. Uh, every time we add a class, we change frameworks. We have to resubmit those. And it takes about two months to do that. Um, program frameworks. Um, a typical program framework is about 40 pages long. And they're com complicated, they're, you have to have the right component. Uh, teacher certification accountability because they all, CTE teachers don't necessarily have to have a general education a certificate, so that's the kind of thing we have to monitor. Advisory committees and CTSO, we, those are some things that we have to monitor. So future direction, focus on the programs that we have. I think we have some great programs. Um, you know, a lot of people have been talking about Skill Center, that's great, but a Skill Center can only offer courses that the consortium of schools don't have. So, what do Skill Centers typically have? Metal, woods. They have automotive, that'd be a great thing to add, but there are a lot of times Skill Centers kind of, you have, you cannot offer the same thing. So, a consortium would be Pullman, Colfax, Colton, Garfield, Toulouse. So, we'd have to figure out what programs we could offer that none of those schools offer. So that, that's why skill centers are great, and I've worked at a skill center and it's awesome, um, but we, it has a, it's a very careful plan. And, and so, uh, CTE secretary is helping with the demands of CTE from budgeting frameworks, uh, CTE website, 
we are we're putting all we're look we're putting all the advisory committee minutes we're going to put the program evaluations on the website so if you go to the Pullman school district website there is a CTE piece of it uh, and it's getting updated probably daily um, but we're, we're working on that uh, grant writing Perkins grant is due by the end of October so it's a busy month for me uh, for the CTE side of things and so this year we're, we're applying for a Perkins grant for the multimedia program next year will be ag education the following year will be foods and nutrition so i i kind of have it on a rotation cycle uh last year we did metals and wood the year before i did business ed uh, and so we're kind of going with with that um, continued community involvement with program advisory committees because our program advisory committees keep our programs up to industry standards and and that's a very big important thing um, and continue to develop the P pullman school district website or for CTE so and I think that's it any questions question. yeah so on those Perkins grants that yeah. you apply for it, are they always about fifteen to twenty thousand yeah. dollars okay. yeah and we we because it makes it cleaner on our end we, we typically use it for supplies and equipment and we don't use it for some schools we use it for staffing but that gets complicated because then you have to go through and get their staffing with the health benefits and blah 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 so that's why we keep it simple um, and try to just do it and you can do those every year we do those every year um, and it's based off of your the p210 end of the year report that we post submit and it's i'm not sure, sure exactly what it's based off but it's a federal grant from that we get money so yeah it's a great question any other thing all right thank you guys and thank you for your support of ct hold on to these because we'll, we'll be back to these so yeah at some point in time, Chris, could we get a list of the uh, names of the community members on our yes. advisory committee? That's a great question. Because there's what eight? Um, as we discovered, is we didn't have a very clean list of advisory committee, and that's the benefit of having the CT secretary. Now that we're we're going to have someone who's holding instructors accountable for keeping that in, that roster available. So yes, we can. We'll do that. Uh, right now. We only have two programs that have submitted their rosters, and they they have until Friday to do that. Um, and they're having their advisory committees now, their committee meetings, and so uh, instructors are kind of recruiting things. I know business ed is if you know anybody in business, they're looking for people. Um, so uh, whether it's accounting, any of those type of things, and so uh, yeah, so we are working on. There are some things that. Amber is going to help out with as our CT secretary. That's going to help keep things monitored, and you know everybody will have access to that. Good. Yep. Good. Thank you. Thank yep. you, Chris. All right. The next report this evening is the risk management program report presented by our executive director of operations, Joe Thornton. You're going to make me follow Chris because this is not nearly as exciting as CTE, but. It is what it is. So in front of you was a one-page handout um, with some highlighting at the top that's just kind of a broad overview of risk management. Risk management in involves lots of different pieces, including us trying to maintain safe schools, um, following certain protocols, as well as paying a big insurance bill every year. So just some highlights for you. Uh, we saw a jump in our insurance costs this year of $46,000. Diane and I anticipated that. Part of the reason we anticipated that is we knew we were going to be adding a 73,000 square foot building to the roster of assets. Additionally, adding, having nine new buses replace nine older buses, adding a couple of support vehicles. So we knew that was going to jump. Although. Most of that jump, actually, $25,000 is, is because of an overall 8.5% cost increase from USIP, um, of which we are part of that pool. We access it through clear risk out of Euphreda, and it just it is what it is. I mean, unfortunately, we're in a climate right now where people see schools as deep pockets, so there are lots of lawsuits against school districts. Luckily, we are only dealing with a small handful of those ourselves, but that's that's the reality. And um, you know, last winter was relatively mild, but the winter before was hard on schools. I think there were a lot of school claims because of that. That drives those cost insurance. So of that forty-six thousand dollars, the bulk of it was from just a rate increase, twenty-five 
forty-one thousand was because of <coughs> adding Camiac to buildings that need to be insured, asking, adding some support vehicles, so on and so forth. Um, hats off to uh, our local hub agent Ryan Foch. When he first saw the bill, he worked with USIP and actually got it reduced slightly arguing that we are a very safe district so he was able to get us a slight discount slight mind you um, and keep in mind that insurance costs are really not a reflection of what it costs to insure like this building because the likelihood of this building being damaged is pretty low the insurance costs are really a reflection of our liability our liability for having buildings having students having staff driving buses, driving cars, all those different things. That's the real cost of our of our insurance. So some highlights to <clears throat> for the year of things that help reduce that risk. And remember it's risk management, not risk elimination. It's, you know, we've added some additional cameras to schools. We uh, increased door, uh, building security. We added some fencing at schools. We've got have, have had lots, several, uh, staff members go through a assess threat assessment, a protocol training, and finally a continued emphasis on staff and student safety. I can feel the collective eye roll when I hit send an email that reminds staff of things like don't stand on chairs, don't leave ladders out for students to climb on. And my favorite every year is walk carefully in the winter and wear sensible <laughs> shoes. Even and there is a cold. collective eye roll if not flat out face-to-face -face scoffing for people <laughs> and then karma bites them in the tail and they fall someday so oh, it's fine Dan then you can say I told you so yeah. I would never say that oh. any questions about risk management and insurance thank you thank you all right uh, the next report this evening is the district choice report presented by Superintendent Maxwell and it says Shannon, but that can't be right. No, uh, Shannon prepared the report oh, and so okay. I'll be delivering the, <laughs> okay. the report. Um, and again, uh, you've seen this previously uh, via communication, uh, but just to review it, um, every year it's, uh, we take a look at what we call our district choice report. So choice, remember, is um, students choosing into the Pullman School District. And you can see that it's been relatively stable since 15, 2015-16 um, to 2019-20, from a high of 82 to a low of 56, and we're at 72. So really not much uh, change as far as uh, choice in. Uh, where they head it, as you can see, um, obviously we don't have any information from Camiac because it wasn't open until this year. Uh, but we do have two students, 7-7, seven, seven, Franklin Jefferson, 6 and Sunnyside. Uh, you'll see a majority of our students tend to come at the high school. And that's uh, due to the fact that we offer so many uh, clubs, electives, and classes more than some of the smaller surrounding districts. So um, we do see quite a bit of students at choice in from other districts in high school. And again, if you look at those numbers, they really haven't changed much at all. Pretty, pretty stable. Um, where do students come from? Um, obviously Colton, Colfax, um, Garfield, um, Palouse are the primary. Um, we do get a couple from St. John. Again, if you look at the total, pretty much be stable. How many choice out? So if you look, uh, this is by grade level, obviously, um, from anywhere from a high of 28 to a low of 18 over the last five years, relatively no change. You're talking a difference of one or two students. Where are the students going to? Um, Colfax, Colton. Most of them are going though online. Virtual Academy, um, Insight, um, Internet Academy, Mary Knight, um, Cornerstone, Spokane, um, Wava. Uh, a few go to uh, some of the other smaller districts, but mostly students that are choosing out are choosing to online schools. So um, home-based instruction, um, again, 
Uh, the numbers on the left there, 81 to 61, it looks like. So this is our lowest number of home-based instruction students. Um, choice out, choice into. Um, relatively stable, not much change at all. And that concludes my review of the district choice report. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, the next part of the agenda is the visitors section. This part of the agenda is for anyone wishing to speak before the board, either as an individual or as a member of a group. Visitors addressing the board will go to the microphone and state their name and address prior to presenting their information. The board will listen and may offer clarification but will not discuss the topic at this time. The board may consider moving the topic presented to a future meeting date as a discussion item. Please keep your comments civil and respectful and limit your remarks to three minutes. Individual speakers may not give their time to other speakers. And we don't have anyone signed in to speak this evening, so I'll just ask would anyone care to address the board? There does not appear to be a great rush, so uh, let's move on then to the consent agenda. Should I to expedite business at a board meeting, the board approves the use of a consent agenda, which includes items considered to be routine in nature. Any item which appears on the consent agenda may be removed from the consent agenda by a member of the board and voted on separately. The remaining items will be voted on by a single motion. Tonight's consent agenda consists of minutes, personnel report, overnight field trip requests, warrants, ASB fundraisers, and transfer requests. And I would now entertain a motion regarding the consent agenda. I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The consent agenda is approved. Next, we'll move on to action items. There is one tonight. Action items have been previously discussed by the board, and the board will now take action by motion. And uh, Joe Thornton will come up to review Resolution 192007, Whitman County Transportation Cooperative. <clears throat> Thank you. So at the last board meeting, I presented uh, three documents. Which one would you like first, Joe? Um, that's a great question. I, well, you can just go to the executive summary. OK. Uh, three documents. The first one was a resolution to form the Transportation Co-op in conjunction with Colfax, Palouse, and Garfield School Districts. The second document was the uh, Transportation Cooperative Agreement, which the other districts were also considering and did approve. So that's Colfax, Garfield, and Palouse. And the third document was the Service Agreement. Uh, the Service Agreement is actually something that will get um, updated, amended every year. And the reason for that is we would expect over the 10 years of the co-op that prices will inflate. So it gives the host district, that's us, the ability to adjust those service prices accordingly every year. Any questions about our intention to form or desire to form a transportation co-op? I think this is well received by the community. I think it's a win-win for everybody, which is, which is the exact intent of the state funding for it. Which, and of course, the funding for it is not a guarantee, but the track record's been pretty, pretty successful for these, for these co-ops. I think it just shows we're willing to cooperate. And if we don't get approved for the funding, we would just postpone everything. There's the language is such that if we don't get the funding for it, the co the co-op basically dissolves. We would, I'm we assuming, would we would circle back to it in the next funding cycle. Yeah. Which is once a year. Correct. Correct. Once a year. I will move that the board approve by resolution 192007. Second. Sorry. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve resolution 192007, which is uh, a resolution for the Pullman School District entering into an interdistrict transportation cooperative with Colfax, Pullman, and Garfield School Districts. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? 
Okay. Thank you thank, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. All right. Next, we'll move on to our discussion items. There are four. The first discussion item this evening is a request to change WIAA districts presented again by Chris Franklin. All right. So back in February or March, I kind of presented an idea that was going around that the Great Northern League would probably, our athletic league uh, and activities league would be dissolving. And so I kind of kind of want to go over an update with that with you guys. Uh, just so you guys can, if you read the newspaper article, that kind of basically summarizes what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so why, why is the Great Northern League going away? Uh, it's because classifications will be changing in November. And what that means is instead of having 85 schools in the 4A, 85 in the 3A and 2A and so forth, there's hard numbers. So to be a 2A school, you would have to be four, 450 kids to eight, nine, 899 in 9 through 11 grades. So with that, doing, with that change, we're losing Cheney. Um, Cheney is gone. Um, as of next year, they will not be. We will. They are not a league com opponent of ours. In fact, in probably about six years, they're going to be up to 2,600 kids because they're growing that bad. They're that fast. So, but that's beside the point. Uh, so we're incorporate the 2A teams from the GSL. So because the the numbers are there, Shadle Park's already a 2A school. Uh, Rogers, because of their the new free and reduced rate amendment, they're going to be dropping down to a 2A. And there's a possibility. I'm saying slim possibly. I'm hopeful that North Central, with their free and reduced rate count, might drop to a 2A. That'd be great. I don't think that's going to happen. It's a slim chance. Uh, as of right now, Deer Park would be a 2A, uh, depending on that free and reduced rate, because uh, they they're at 465 students. And so in November, we'll know exactly where the numbers are based off of the free and reduced rate, rate for every high school. And so uh, we'll know more about who's going to be in our league. So with that being said, it's hard to have a, a league of four schools. Um, West Valley, East Valley, Clarkson, and Pullman. And so we decided, as I mentioned back in earlier this year, we're going to be have a new, new league. It'll be a Greater Spokane League. Um, and so I just kind of want to give you an update on that. So here's a timeline of things that have happened. In the fall of 2018, there are some amendments. Um, Winter of 2019, there's amendments that were passed by the WIA, uh, and I think I forwarded you guys, all of you guys, the email about that. Uh, spring of 2019, the GSL and GNL superintendent principals and ADs all met up um, at West Valley High School. Uh, Bob, Justin, and I went up there uh, for a meeting, kind of talk about what this could look like. Uh, there were some reservations from Central Valley, but. Uh, I think they kind of came to a little bit. And so the GSL board created a conceptual framework that the two ways will only play the two ways unless both schools agree. So as a two-way school, we wouldn't have to play the, the Ferris's and Lewis and Clark's and Central Valley's that are two times the size of us. So there's a, that subcommittee was created. So there's two ADs from each league. Um, I'm fortunate to be on that one, so I go up there once a month for our GSL, GNL subcommittee meetings. Um, and so well, what we're doing, when you merge two leagues, there's two handbooks you have to merge. There's financial stuff, there's a lot of different things. So those are still taking place because there's a lot of, a lot of things and we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, so the subcommittee met in August um, and then we, we'll meet again here in November. And so in the fall of 2019, uh, the GSL, GNL ADs met to discuss potential scheduling. Um, so every, we assign uh, sports coordinators for every sport, and so we've done that. And then this is kind of what we're doing here is we're getting recommendations. We need a, a signed form that I think Courtney gave or sent out uh, that says the school board approves us moving to District 8. Now what does that mean? Right now, Pullman, Cheney, West Valley, East Valley, Clarkson are in District 7. We have to change, to go to the GSL, we have to go to WI District 8. And so that's the form you'll see that will need to be signed uh, once it's approved. And so we'll go with that. And so we'll, we'll get those forms to the league. Then we all 
all of our schools are doing the same thing. We've already done some things. So some pros and cons. It's going to be a stronger 2A league. We're losing one school, gaining two for sure, possibly four. Okay, so we don't have to go to Yakima for a lot of things. Either. That's our hope. Scheduling. We're all going to sit in the same room and do scheduling. You know, the 2A will play 2As. We'll schedule that out. But also for non-league games, if Pullman decides to play Ferris and volleyball, we can sit down and have that conversation. Um, so different things. GSL passes. There are passes for the GSL, and that's what it brings up to the profit sharing piece. Um, because the GSL sells passes, they also dis distribute that money back to the schools because that kind of affects your gate receipts and all that. And so the profit sharing is going to be a big thing, uh, some, sometimes with advertisement because the GSL does do a lot of advertising and they get a lot of money in and they, they send that out to the schools. Uh, and then the competitive equity piece, Rogers, Shadle, and North Central are not competitive at all. In fact, if you read the newspaper last week or the week before, North Central ended their football game against Shadle because, or against Rogers because they were losing 33 to zero and they had a bunch of injuries. And so it's the competitive equity that we're looking at um, to help with them. Our competitive equity, we're competitive in all of our sports. Um, and so this will be a great move for us, but it will also help them as well. Uh, Postseason allocation, uh, we're hoping because we're having more schools in our league, we'll get some more allocations. Right now we only get one, so that's why we have to go and have a regionals with the CWAC, uh, the Yakima League and to get another allocation. But if we have two allocations, we don't have to go in and glue in with them anymore. Uh, so some cons, initial expense. To just join is $5,000, okay? In addition to that 5,000, every year we'll have to pay 5,000. And those, those, that number might be, because we're adding more schools, those numbers might be going down. Uh, but the initial expense is $5,000 to, to join. And then every year, we already pay league dues as it is. Um, so it, that, that would be a con, because it's a little bit more than we pay, but uh, we can get around that one. So uh, the next step. So letter of application to the GSL to, to come into their league. Uh, Justin and I sent that in August of 2019. Uh, the, the, all the other schools have already submitted theirs in August of 2019 as well. Board approval to pursue entry into the District 8 GSL from District 7, uh, as I kind of um, mentioned, and then request to the WI. So what we're gonna do is, as soon as all the schools get their forms in to the league, we're all gonna submit them all at the same time to WIA to get that done. So, that's it. Any questions? How uh, GSL passes, you mean it, it, admittance it to yeah. all sporting events? Yep. How is that gonna affect the booster sales? We'll still sell the boosters. I mean, because there's there's a lot of people that don't go to away games, they just come to home games, and they might not want the GSL pass. Um, and so we'll work with boosters on that. Uh, we can still sell the booster pass and go from there. It, it does get a little tricky, and, and those are some things we've talked. Uh, Clarkson does the same thing, um, but that money would stay with the, with Pullman High School or the Pullman High School booster. It wouldn't go to the league. And why do we need to just dissolve GNL? Why couldn't we keep the two A schools in GNL and then the other schools in the GSL? Great question. Do you know the founding members of the GSL, the founding schools? No. Rogers, Shale, and North Central. Those are the founding members of the Greater Spokane League. And so the Spokane School District would not allow them to leave District 8 to join our league. So that's why. So it, it makes it a clean clean for everybody. Just no, so. it's not clean. It screws it all up. But the funny thing is, and <laughs> it does screw things up, but... Yeah. Uh, the one thing is, is the Greater Northern League has been around for 22 years. Yeah, I know. Do you I know. know what school has been the only school that's been in the Greater Northern League the whole time? Oh. Pullman High School. Oh. Do you know what coach has coached for 22 years in the Greater Northern League? Doug Winchell. So, yes. Yeah, so. And yeah. yeah, before that was the Frontier. Was it Frontier? Frontier League. Yeah. yeah. And it was a great. Yeah. It was a bonus when we changed it to. GNL yep. because we ha actually had a. The Great Northern League used to be a one A league, and then when um, we lost Deer Park and Elk Lake, they formed the Northeast A, and so yeah, that's been crazy. Yeah, I had kids playing you know, Frontier and then GNL. As long as we don't have to go to Cabo, we're good. Yeah. 
It's a long drive. Oh, the long drive. Yes. So <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah. Three in yeah. the morning. Yeah. And, and a lot of it has to do with Spokane schools. I mean, it, it's hard for the GSL to lose their founding member schools to join another oh, league. Oh, wow. man. But I, you know, it, it's kind of hard to be part of the Greater Spokane League too. Oh, trust me. Great Northern League. I think Bob so and I witnessed that. Yeah. So, but that's right. I, you know, I'm kind of stubborn, so and I'm I, sure I can I can stand up to them as much as they too. want. Yeah. Well, Clarkson's been okay, considering. Considering it's Clarkson. <laughs> I don't considering think. Pullman and Clarkson were the two that Central Valley didn't want to travel to. Yeah. So, I don't. But that's right. I don't think so. Well, I, they don't care as long as they have some opponents, do. And, and as I told the newspaper reporters, we're already playing Shadow, we're already playing North Central, we're already playing Rogers. We're competitive. We're beating them. So it's it's not gonna it's gonna give us more allocations to state. It's just gonna be a different alignment. Have you mentioned this to the boosters yet about what you're doing? I've mentioned it to Amy Toll and we've okay. talked about it. But we, we have the the past thing, I don't know if the the, the passes are gonna continue for the GSL. Because again, C V school district is having problems with some things. And not only us coming in, it's other things. So All right. yeah. Fine. I have yeah. a couple of questions. Yeah. So on the the con the pros and cons sheet, yeah. the cons, the initial expense and the annual dues. Yeah. So does that mean the first year we'll be having to spend ten thousand dollars to join the league, and then yeah. five? Yeah. And we'll budget for that, that through uh, through our levy dollars, and that's kind of where that money comes from. Okay. Is through levy dollars, um, and so we will budget for that this year. Uh, we don't have to pay this year. It won't be until next year. For next year. Correct. And then, it, is there any sort of plan for the profit sharing for mm -hmm. Pullman to be involved with the profit yeah. sharing? Yeah. Yeah. So currently, the profit sharing that the GSL does is kind of like what colleges do. Is everybody pays in? You know, when when a Pac-12 school goes to a bowl, every school from the Pac-12 gets money. And so that's kind of what this is going to do because they have ad they have an advertising firm that goes out and advertises for the GSL, um, and so all that money goes into a pot and then goes goes out to the schools, the member schools, and then uh, gate receipts go in there and then it gets goes back to the schools. Um, they pay for ticket takers, they take they pay for workers for games, things like that. So that would that will help us because. Right now, trying to get ticket takers is impossible because typically our para pros and classified get ticket takers, or they want to do it, but they can't because the federal guidelines say we'd have to pay overtime. Now, if we go through district or GSL, that's a different organization, and those people are working through for the GSL and not for Pullman School District. So it could it could have some benefits on that, and so and then the, the obviously the GSL passes. I um, mean, if they're going to sell passes, that has to go back to the schools. That's ASV law. So, okay. yeah. So even if we didn't sell the passes through boosters, the money would still come It back. will still come back. Um, you know, uh, you know, those are things like Clarkson. Clarkson has a spirit game with Lewiston. That money would stay at Clarkston. It wouldn't go to the GSO. And that's, that's one of the things that the subcommittee is working on. And that's one thing that Doug Munyon, the principal at Clarkson, and I are both on it. And so that's one thing we're pushing is some of those things that are already in place are going to stay in place. Yeah. So in terms of transportation costs? Yeah. Um, it, it should be, it, our, tra our transportation costs should relatively stay the same. Uh, instead of traveling up to East Valley three times, we'll go there twice or once. They'll come here once, and then we'll go to Rogers. And so, it, it should be a wash. Uh, the only the only sport that will not be part of the GSL is going to be swimming. And the reason that is is because Cheney, Pullman, and Clarkson are the only schools that have swimming in Eastern Washington. So that's why our swim team has to join the CWAC to to swim. And so, so that that cost of going to the the CWAC will still be there, um, but just for those sports. So will the uh, football games be played at the Joe Alvey Stadium? Uh, maybe. Uh, Mead is building their own stadium currently. Um, if you know where Mead Junior High used to be, they're, they tore that down and they're building a stadium there. And so it's going to be kind of a mix. So because it's Rogers, Shadle, and North Central, and that's Joe Alvey Stadium is owned by Spokane School District, we'd probably play there some games. And it depends what they do with their stadium because they're trying to move it downtown. So, so on a personal level, that means we'll be charged rights fees now for broadcasts more than likely. No. 
Mm-hmm. Trust me, I have, I have my own interests. Okay. You're you're on. Right. Broadcast Good. fees are there. Same same for same for Clarkson. I'm Clarkson. Write this down. You can write it down <laughs> because Clarkson broadcasts their games too. Yeah. You know, so there there are some right. things that the Spokane School District or the GSL aren't used to, and these are the things that's kind of why okay. I can be stubborn if I need. To. And my other question then is, if the GSL sells passes, yeah, the boosters have passes, and we get money from the GSL passes, are that would that go to boosters or would that go somewhere else? The money from the GSL would go to the school's ASB account. Okay. So, and that's where that's where that's where the the booster money goes into because we're losing money from ticket sales, that's where that booster money goes. And yeah. then we divide it out to the sports teams <coughs> and activities that need it. Right, yep. right. Okay. Yep, great question. Yeah. So we just have to make sure the levy passes. Um, yes. How, what are the annual league dues for the current league that we're in and how are they calculating these? <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> yes, it's $500 for our current league. Okay. And but we only have five schools. Sure. So. On what basis do they come up with this idea of an initial expense? Yeah. The initial expense, every time you join a league, there's it's either like $1,000 or $5,000. kind of just depends on the league. For um, what, though? It's just uh, because there's there's more there's more paperwork to do. The district director has to do more work. The league the league president has to to do things. Doesn't that just seem like an arbitrary made up number, though? It does. Okay. It, I, I'm not disagreeing with you one bit. Um, all leagues. If if we went to the Northeast A because we were lo- we had a smaller enough school, they would charge us probably a thousand or two thousand. I mean, it's just it's one of those initiate. Now here here's the kicker. If we leave the GSL, we get that money back. Oh, good. Okay. So, it, so it, I don't know why. I, w- I would like to answer that, but that's been in place for forever. So, I think so if it's we more leave, like an earnest money. Yeah. Okay. The other the other thing that's <laughs> going to happen is when the Great Northern League dissolves, even though we're working on a Spokane Teachers Credit Union is is doing a letter of agreement for all schools in the league. We when when the league is over in ju- June or July they'll divide all that money up by five, by five schools, and then we'll get a portion of what's left in that bank account. So so that's why you know, our league struggles financially, just because we have five teams, we play each other three or four times, people don't go to the third and fourth games. No. It, it's boring. I mean, you know, you go, if you've seen our volleyball team, they have a, they've lost one game to Moscow. You go to see them play East Valley next, in two weeks, it's gonna be boring because not a lot of people will be there. So schools are schools and even in the postseason we're not gonna see a lot of them. So hopefully this will change that. So any other questions? Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And just just a comment, Chris has put a lot of work into this and uh, Justin and I have had the opportunity to go join him in some of those conversations and they are not uh, easy conversations, let's put it that way for for us. But he's done a really great job. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, Next discussion item is minimum basic education compliance presented by Superintendent Maxwell. session I had the opportunity to go over the information with you so uh, again you're not going to see anything new or enlightening but uh, this is our annual um, requirement to let you know that um, we meet the district-wide average of 1,027 hours in grades 1 through 12 um, you can see it's 1,087.6 for K5 1,044 for 6 8 and 1,087.6 for 912 180 days a year so uh, we meet all the minimum basic ed uh, requirements. Not as exciting as the athletics, but. I like the quickness of it though. <laughs> okay. Well, there's not too much to discuss there. <laughs> not, not a whole lot, sorry. All right. It be more entertaining. But. Yeah, no, it's, that's good. All right. Uh, 
Next discussion item is uncollected non-tax revenue presented by Finance Director Diane Hodge. Oh, this is way more exciting than Bob's, but I'll even try to beat him in time. <laughs> so every year I present to the board our uncollected non-tax revenue. Um, according to policy 6119, if we haven't received the revenue within seven years, the board can um, deem that uncollectible. So this year we are bringing forward um, $1,109.50 that we will ask the board to declare uncollectible December 31st. Um, it involves one accounts receivable and the rest are fines and fees. I'm done. She can't, he I can't even open it up there. yet, yeah. Diane. So. I thought you were telling me to hurry up. <laughs> no, I'm not trying the computer to hurry up. So, so you said well, the rest were fines and fees. The first one was what? Uh, Accounts receivable. Uh, oh, okay. Um, and it was twenty-two dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Sorry. Is that for a service or something that the district Probably provided? Probably a or? rental. Oh, okay. yeah. Sure. From so fines point. and fees would that typically be when someone leaves the district and because you have to pay your fines you and do. fees to graduate and to get your diploma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's when they've left. Yes. So is that like library fines? Could be library fines, book Could fines. They didn't book. turn their books in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it? Do you find it growing over the years? Or? Actually, it's shrinking. So oh, yeah. we're finding since we've got um, gone to online that we don't receive as many checks. Oh. And so we're getting to the point we may not even be bringing this, you know, um, because we're, they're just so minimal right now. Yeah, it's pretty. It's and you don't get all these six dollars, <coughs> hundred dollars in bank yeah. fees. Yeah. Is this something that we could you take could. care of tonight? Yeah. It doesn't seem really. Well, worth it's discussing. typically in the discussion item, but I think according to our policy, it states that the board has to um, declare this unclaimed property. So we move it to an action item. Okay. Or, I mean, a discussion item. Yeah. So you're really going to give up on the seven-year-old stuff? Yeah. Well, and the our uh, collection agency won't collect after seven years, so that's kind of goes away on its own. Alrighty. Well, would you like it moved to an action? I want to. I think it would be nice to take care of it. Sure. I would move that we move the uncollected non-tax revenue to an action. Item. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we move the uncollected non-tax revenue to an action item this evening. Is there any discussion of that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? All right. This is now an action item this evening. Is there a motion? I move to approve the uncollected non-tax revenue. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve uncollected non-tax revenue. Is there any discussion of that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Okay, wonderful. This Thank is something you. we won't have to look at again. <laughs> but she did such a nice quick You absolutely did. So speedy. Okay, and then the last discussion item this evening is educational specifications for Lincoln Middle School renovations and expansion. And, and for the record, I'm going to speculate that it's killing Diane to give up on collecting that. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> no, no comment. So I'm I'm presenting to you this evening um, a discussion item about the ed specs for Lincoln Middle School. Uh, you've been through this process multiple times with Franklin Edition, Jefferson Edition, Pullman High School modernization, and the Cambiac construction. <clears throat> the process goes from. Uh, ed specs. The ed specs are generated by the architect after meeting with staff and hearing from staff what do you need your spaces to do? What do we need this building to do? Those ed specs are then used after your approval by the architect to go and develop a schematic design, design development, construction documents, and then finally uh, hopefully taking out to bid <coughs> and construction. So it's one step in that process. I did not make hard copies for everybody. You have it electronically. It is 77 pages. I have one copy available, and I'll make that available to the public at the district office if they don't want to look at it online. Any questions? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, on this one we don't have to do all the, uh, like, I guess it was for CAMIAC, we had to go through all the green studies and all those sorts of things. We don't have to do that? Well, the, the new construction will have to meet LEED standards. Yeah. So we'll have to meet so those energy guidelines. Uh, a couple of steps that we will be able to um, avoid is not have to go through value engineering oh, okay. with with this because there's no no state money involved. Not doing value engineering is going to save us about fifty two thousand dollars. And since it's a fairly straightforward project, nobody thinks that's necessary. So, you, but CSG will still are they just going to yes. monitor it or are they going to go through? CS, it CSG will still be involved, but okay. but value engineering is another process where they bring in architects and builders oh. to analyze the plan and make sure it's it's doable. Yeah. But they, they did that for the high school too though. They had to do it. We had to do it for the high school because it involved state money. Fancy. We had to do it for Camiac. And for the high school because it was a such a complicated project. Yeah, the it was phasing. it was critical. Yeah. It was just amazing. But it's it's Quite not it's not necessary for for Lincoln. We will do something called constructability, a constructability review, but that's further down the road, but we're going to be able to avoid uh, value engineering. Saving money is a good thing. Saving money to spend money. <laughs> Other questions? FYI, was just trying to figure out a way to, or to the state, all that sales tax that's being paid by us from from money we get from the state and then we pay it back to the state I'm trying to figure out a way to uh, have that go into a another kind of construction fund or something yeah. because that's the darndest thing you get this whole but we got a grant from Camiac and something was fourteen thousand dollars the sales tax was fourteen thousand dollars it was like fine right back. give it away and take it away <laughs> so but they're looking at different yeah. ways to I often have vendors confused how we're not tax exempt. Yeah. Well, you have school board members, the same thing. Yeah. Anything else? Thank, oh, you, thank, you, Joe. thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right. Uh, the next part of the agenda is informational items. Informational items do not require action or discussion by the board. The items are included in the agenda for the board to review and may be moved to the discussion items section of the board agenda by any board member. Informational items may include board procedure updates and non-substantive policy updates. And tonight's information items are administrative requirements update, board calendar, current enrollment, and the Pullman Promise priorities, goals, and success indicators. Would anyone care to move an information item to discussion? No? Okay. Well, then, if there are no objections, the board will now recess into an executive or closed ses session um, for the purpose of discussing real estate acquisition and evaluation of personnel. Do we know how? 20 minutes. Okay, for 20 minutes. Uh, no action will be taken, and then we will adjourn at the end of the executive session.